That is uh, where the North Koreans said, that's enough, no more video for you. But uh, it wasn't particularly uh, interesting in any case. But we are uh, now uh, watching to see, and government experts and security experts around the world are closely watching this summit uh, between the two Korean leaders. And it's expected to impact uh, discussions uh, between North Korea and the US. So I believe we have uh, an expert on the line joining us by Skype, uh, Mark P. Barry. Uh, he is an independent Asian affairs analyst who has followed uh, US DPRK North Korea relations for the past 28 years. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, Dr. Barry. Yeah, so leading up to the third inter-Korean summit this year, there has been significant attempts to improve relations between the two sides, various sports exchanges and the recent opening of a liaison office. As an international observer, what is the key issue for this week's inter-Korean summit? Well, we're in kind of a stalemate between the United States and North Korea. Uh, I, I keep telling people they didn't even meet in Singapore for five hours. Uh, and uh, the, the, the cultural and political and historical gap is so huge between the countries. So President Moon is doing uh, uh, not only fulfilling the Panmunjom Declaration, which is to visit Pyongyang, as two of his predecessors did, but he's there to um, improve the relationship uh, between the U.S. and North Korea by acting as a mediator or honest broker. Uh, now, Dr. Barry, there is a lot of speculation about whether the two Koreans will formally end the Korean War. It's something we've been talking about at length uh, since we started uh, this broadcast a few hours ago. What's your take on this? I think uh, even a... Um, a somewhat informal declaration is a good idea. Uh, again, uh, my mantra has, has been for many years that uh, you cannot have a technical state of war on the Korean Peninsula go on for seven decades. So although a real peace treaty would require the signatures of China, uh, North Korea, the U.S., and probably South Korea, even though it was not an original signatory, uh, a, a real peace treaty would take quite a long time for the fine print to be arrived at in negotiations. But a simple declaration, uh, even between the two Koreas, and one where President Trump merely says in a tweet that he supports what the two Koreas have announced, that may be an important start. Uh, but I think we have to take a step forward in putting the past behind us even if it's just a baby step. Yeah, baby steps are OK, as long as it's a baby step in the right direction. Now, President Moon has said he will aim to mediate and accelerate uh, the process, the dialogue between Washington and Pyongyang. No easy task. But what would you say are the most critical issues and sticking points in order to tackle uh, during this summit uh, in order for these denuclearization talks to advance to uh, what hopefully is the next uh, positive forward looking step? He can only do the best he can. Uh, as I has, have said, the, regardless of who's president of South Korea and regardless of who's president in the United States, uh, the overriding U.S. concern since 1990 has been uh, the uh, complete, verifiable, et cetera, denuclearization of, the, uh, of North Korea. And um, unfortunately, the United States does not see the uh, issue on the peninsula as a, a historical issue, as a cultural issue, uh, but they see it primarily in non-proliferation terms. This is, uh, and this is the result of nearly 30 years of a propensity in the United States for policymakers and bureaucrats uh, uh, to see the Korean problem in this way. But I believe for both Koreas, uh, there's a benefit to the degree to which they can cooperate, uh, collaborate, uh, eventually down the road, perhaps reintegrate, but in any case, be act more 
uh, as a united Korea in certain respects that would not be at the receiving end of what any major power would otherwise want to elbow them into, if you will. Uh, the United States just, regardless of whatever president you talk about or whatever president may take office in the future, it's almost impossible to get out of that mindset. So uh, in, I would say President Moon's challenge is to show that a great deal has been arrived at between him and Kim Jong-un, and uh, he'll uh, encourage Kim Jong-un to very closely adhere to their understanding so that uh, greater cooperation can take place between North Korea uh, and the U.S. Uh, on these concerns. Now, that said, it does not mean that anyone should realistically expect North Korea to give up its nuclear program. I think they are looking for a status somewhat like Pakistan or even uh, somewhat like Israel but certainly Pakistan, which does have a declared uh, nuclear capability. Uh, so the U.S. might be able to look the other way to a, a certain extent, but there has to be a lot of give back. But what the U.S. fails to understand is there have to be reciprocal actions. And it's actually, in, in my view, a very reasonable thing to ask, not to be asked to take numerous steps and then only get some benefit later on. But the reciprocity the U.S. feels is almost unearned because they feel so um, uh, threatened by the current state of North Korea's nuclear program. But I think the U.S. needs the guts to um, go beyond that viewpoint and realize that there is merit to taking simultaneous steps and being patient about it and seeing small progress. But at the same time knowing they're not going to get the whole hog. They're not going to get everything they want. So that's why the working relationship with President Moon, President Trump, and Kim Jong-un is very, very important. And we don't want to delegate uh, any of those things to any other power, whether it be China, Russia, Japan, or anybody else who thinks they, they um, would have a reason to, to speak their mind and, and have an effect. So uh, I'm hoping for the best. And I think that um, third time's the charm. And it's not only the third summit uh, for President